Oh, like, I'm not a big believer in participation trophies. Like, I feel like you have to earn your trophy. I look kind of crazy because I just put on self-tanner, so, like, ignore that. Hey, y'all. What's up? So, if you don't know me, my name is Abigail. Um, I make videos. I don't know. I do a lot of crazy shit. But today, we're going to be trying something new on the right. channel. Um, today, I know I do a lot of vlogs and stuff, and, um, took a little bit of a break just to get back into the groove of school and all that and the holidays and... You know, plus I feel like my Indiana vlogs are always like really boring. So like... But also, so funny story. So you know how like when you're going back to school and you go home and you're reminded of all these things that you should have packed when you first moved in, right? Like, for instance, I found while I was home that I have a love for Ralph Lauren sweatshirts because I stole my mom's. Like the vintage, like, like just like a chill sweatshirt. So I brought a bunch of those back, and you know, packing was a little, a little bit of a struggle. Like, you know what I mean? Um, Cause you always like just like take more stuff when you go back to school. I don't know. Maybe this is just a me problem. So long fucking story short, I forgot my vlog camera charger. So we're gonna be doing some new things on the channel while I um, wait to get a new charger, or just like have my mom send it. I don't know what's gonna go on. So today we're going to be doing a really fun video. I've been wanting to make it for a while. I've been wanting to make like videos kind of like this for a minute, but I never really have and I really got around to and I just like never really like wanted to. But I think today's the day where we're going to start doing some more video essay content, which I'm really excited about. I have a whole list of topics I want to cover, so be on the lookout for that. So I'm really excited about today's video essay because I'm going to be doing a deep dive into why YouTube kind of feels dead. I feel like YouTube just hasn't really been the same these past couple years. Every couple years we go through a kind of weird phase of just like nothingness in YouTube. Um, and also in this video, I'm gonna be kind of more discussing like kind of, I don't really know how to like explain it. Not really like the beauty, not really necessarily the beauty side of YouTube, but more like um, the relatable girlies, I don't know. I don't really know what this is, um, because it kind of evolved, I feel like. Um, kind of like, you know, the female YouTuber kind of aesthetic vibe, whoever they are, whatever you want to call it. I'll explain it as we, like, get into the video. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do it. I have my notebook like a noob. So to, first off, I want to start talking about the f kind of phases of this kind of style of YouTuber. Um, the it girls, that's what I wanted to call them, the it girls. Um, so starting off in 2010 to 2014, those were kind of the early it girls. L like for example, I have like Bethany Moda, Claudia Saluski. I'm not really sure what her like YouTube name was. I just know her as Claudia Saluski. Um, even though I would argue that Claudia Saluski is kind of like, she stayed relevant, which like good for her. Like she's, oh, like she's been pretty active on YouTube. Like all through this time i feel like especially starting in 2010 i feel like now she's kind of focusing more on like you know instagram and um i know she's acting now why do i watch her movie i love my dad that movie we'll talk about it another time you know those kind of like earlier like beauty guru like they would always make like, there was always like that easy healthy lunch idea kind of deal but this kind of early it girl they made a lot of like makeup content you know room decor easy healthy lunch ideas um and it very much kind of kept this perfect life aesthetic um but at the same time it was kind of like the early 2010s now next up this kind of bleeds into a kind of second sect i would say or second era if you will which i call i came up with this the saturation squad and um i feel like bethany and claudia kind of like we're in this as well, but I'm kind of more focusing on that um, 2017 to 2015 kind of vibe, like My Life is Eva, Nikki and Gabby, Alicia Marie, even Jessie Page was kind of in this like kind of grouping and all the videos, it kind of still focused on that, you know, perfect life, makeup and beauty and there was also a little bit of comedy I remember, like they do like, oh like expectation versus reality like that was a big one goals, actual goals af literally my life is beaches every single night messy friends and christmas lights literally my life is skinny with a high fashion riding in the jeep wagon literally my life is literally my life is ooh -wee. i have everything we want on the screen ooh -wee. i have everything we want on the screen and i remember them like all being like a big squad 
squad and just like hanging out in LA too. Like I wanted to be part of that squad so bad. And I feel like this kind of era like lasted until about 2017. But then in 2017, we kind of get the rise of the dope girls. Um, their peak relevancy, I would say. Someone's car is getting broken into. I feel like their peak relevancy was probably on like the 2018, 2019 range. You know, like they were going on all these trips with the dope company. Emma Chamberlain, like the Gerties. You know? Hey, can I just say too that like the amount of money I would pay to find out what happened to the Gerties? Because I want to know. I still want to know. It's been years, but I still want to know. You know, I feel like even probably Luna Montana was a part of this squad, even though, like, I didn't really feel like she, like, went, like, on the dope trips, but she was definitely, like, relevant during this time. Marla Catherine, too. Y'all remember Marla Catherine and, like, Avery Ovard, Summer McKean, like, that dope girl squad, I would say they're kind of ranged from about 2017 to maybe 2019, 2020. I feel like 2020 was when it really started to fizzle out, um, but we'll get into that later. And I feel like with the dope girls, it was really interesting, especially with Emma Chamberlain's videos, it really showed not really the perfect side of people's lives. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Emma Chamberlain would literally roll out of bed and start filming. Like, a lot of these people started wearing their hair in messy buns, like, you know, getting coffee, like being really real, like letting their hair grow and letting their roots show. So this was kind of a shift, I feel like, from the kind of saturated um beauty guru style even though they did make a lot of beauty videos and outfit and makeup videos um and there are also a lot of separate vlog channels i remember too like sometimes i do vlogs on one side and then like their beauty and fashion videos on another but i mean let's be real like emma just did it all on her one channel however in 2019 2020 maybe this was because of like a lot of different factors but I feel like since then YouTube has kind of dwindled and then now it's just not a lot. I feel like it's a lot of video essays, but there's no really it girls of YouTube if you think about it. I mean, maybe there are some, like a lot of people would argue like Kennedy Walsh and Avery Ovard, but even then, like Avery Ovard, I would say only posts like once a month. Like she's probably my it girl. Um, a lot of these YouTubers are making, you know, podcasts now or focusing on TikTok or Instagram. I feel like YouTube has been kind of dead. So there's also, I feel like, some other factors that kind of played into why YouTube has kind of been dead and why there's no, like, it girls. Um, and I think a big part of it is other social media. Um, now, it's also important to note, too, I was thinking about this earlier, too, but, like, I feel like there's this kind of renaissance of YouTube from about 26... Actually, no, like, I feel like from 2014 to, like, 2019, like... YouTube was like banging because not only did you have these it girls, but you also had like, you know, the Shane Dawson's and Jeffree Star's and um, like all that drama with like Tati and all of them. Like that was like, that was entertaining. Like there was like entertaining like YouTube thing drama going on no matter, even though like it was very problematic and pretty harmful, like it was still entertaining for viewers. But I feel like a big reason why YouTube has kind of been dead is because of old other social media. I was thinking a lot about Vine while well, because Vine was happening during this YouTube renaissance. Um, you know, like there were people that were famous from Vine and they made YouTube channels or vice versa, like people on YouTube would make Vines. Um, I was thinking a lot about Rhett Rivera. I don't know if he started on YouTube or um, Vine, but he was definitely relevant. Like he was collabing with My Life is Eva all the time. Like they like they dated, like they were a big power couple, like it was a whole thing. Again, with Musically, Musically came out during this time and yeah, there were some people that became famous from it, like Baby, like Baby Lauren? Is that what her username was? I, don't, I just know it's Lauren now. Baby Ariel, Baby Ariel, that's who it was. Um, but they were like, you know, the It Girls and Musically, but like it kind of fizzled out. Like Musically was like kind of a short lived thing, end of 2015, early 2016. However, when YouTube kind of started fizzling out in 2020, guess what social media was in? TikTok. I feel like TikTok is just the root of everyone's problems. You know what I mean? I feel like on TikTok, that's kind of taken over and how there's more it girls and how the it girls have kind of switched over. You know, like for instance, like Hannah Maloche and Ellie Thuman are making a lot of TikToks. And um, there's new it girls like Alex Earl, Dylan Mul Mulaney. Mulvaney? Mulaney. I can't fucking talk today. It's a lot easier to go viral on TikTok. 
Um, now listen, y'all. I have been on YouTube since like 2017, I want to say. I've been making videos for a long time, but I feel like I really started to get consistent 2017 through 2020, and I still haven't gone viral. Like, I'm still waiting for the day that I'm like reaching YouTube fame. Um, and everyone's like, oh, like, you have to be consistent. Like, you have to do this, you have to do that. But on TikTok, like, you, like, there's nothing to it. Like, you can make a two second video. Like, for instance, I made like a three second video about cheer drama and it got like 1.5 million views. Um, as long as you use like the right hashtags and the right sounds, like, you can go viral any day. And not only is it easier to go viral and kind of easier to like become famous off of TikTok. But it's also easier to watch. I feel like a lot of times with YouTube, like you had to pull up your phone and like search for the right person or see what's in your recommended and then click on that and then you have to sit there for through a long video. Like I remember like a lot of my vlogs reach or like other people's vlogs, this isn't about me. Um, a lot of these vlogs would, you know, rack up to like 17 minutes. And some of these videos are very long. Like there's sometimes where like there would be like 30 minutes of content in a vlog or like did anyone ever watch like Brittany because I remember like sometimes those things would like reach like a half hour um so there's definitely a lot of content in YouTube because it just allows for more content um but I also feel like there's more people there's more people watching on TikTok too TikTok's such a popular um Platform. And not to say that YouTube isn't a popular platform too. Like I feel like everyone and their mother knows what YouTube is. Everyone and their mother like has YouTube. However, TikTok, you literally open it up and just start watching videos. It's so easy to just scroll and scroll and scroll till the end of time. Therefore, a lot of people are going there just because it's easier. It's instant gratification. You don't have to watch for ages about to hear this person's life update and this person's life update. People, if you want to make a long video, you just make little stints and make a bunch of different videos the vlogs are short you can watch them anywhere you don't have to you know pull up and like click this and click that and then watch like 20 minutes of a person this day you can be literally be like on the train pull up a tiktok and watch like three minutes and be done so it's definitely a convenience thing i've noticed too um and also you know just trends they come and go and also there's a bunch of there's also a couple other factors too that kind of go into that i feel like the fall of youtube youtube egg girls if you will um, I remember listening to Emma Chamberlain's podcast a while ago, and she was talking about how kind of influencers are feeling stale now. I'll put a little clip right here. Just kidding, I couldn't put the actual clip in because of copyright, but here are the episodes of Anything Goes. You guys should listen to them. But also, it's very easy to become an influencer, too. Um, I remember back in the day, like, when people would post discount codes and stuff because let's be honest like a big part of you know youtube fame and youtube this and youtube that is making money um whenever people would come out with discount codes that was kind of like a sign that like they made it like you know what i mean like when brands start to want to work with them now it's so easy to get a discount code for anywhere you know brands like parade and dormify you can go on their website and sign up to be an ambassador and it's easy like you are basically kind of a baby micro influencer even if you have like 200 followers like creating content for these apps not these apps these stores so it's definitely very easy to become kind of like this influencer in a way it feels a lot less exclusive if you think about it because um you know there's people out there you can literally have no followers and probably still get accepted into an ambassador program and um that kind of makes the whole influencer deal feel less exclusive there's a lot, tons of platforms now and tons of agencies even that will help you become an influencer and reach your goals as an influencer. And also another thing I've noticed is that these YouTubers eventually become too famous to be relatable. I feel like a big part of why the Dope Girl Squad was so big is because they were so relatable. You know, like, I'm sorry, but not everyone wakes up like hair curled, like, oh, perfect, like winged eyeliner, like that kind of like the, you know, saturated girls like kind of not like saturated but like that's i just calling them saturated because that was their style um but this kind of saturated um group the saturated style made it show you know they'd wake up and they already had their wing on or you know stuff like that even like the morning routines were like i 
wake up and I put on my Lululemon leggings and I go get my Frappuccino. Um, while well, like the dough girl like squad, it was like, okay, like look like shit and then like get ready and then you look cute. Even in this relatability though, it became a point where they stopped being relatable. And even with that like, you know, 2015, 2017, those expectation versus reality, relatability was a big part of it, you know? Like they would kind of do like caricatures in these expectation versus reality videos where they were like, you know, like, I don't know, you know what I mean? But they were still relatable. But then when they got to a point where they weren't relatable anymore, these relatable, these like dope girls kind of took over with their true relatability. But then they became really famous. Like they started going on trips with dope and they started, you know, getting brand deals and being able to travel, moving to LA. That's a big thing too. I know a lot of people like, get really fussy when influencers move to LA because that makes them feel like less relatable or less, you know, personal because every freaking YouTuber and influencer moves to LA. Cause you know, like whenever, I remember like the warning bells going off whenever like my favorite YouTubers would move to LA because that was a big fucking scary thing because that meant they would change. And like half the times I wouldn't, but like, they did, like, that was kind of when you knew that they were, like, making it. Um, but yeah, like, Emma Chamberlain became one of the faces for Louis Vuitton. Like, Claudia has a celebrity boyfriend. And also, it would be wrong of me for n to not mention the dope scandal where, um, not even the scandal, just, like, the racism. Um, on the dope trips where they would make the, um, women of color sleep in shared beds and on couches and floors and stuff while the white girls got the beds. And also, like, I feel like I should make another deep dive on, dive on a dote because that was weird. Because I had dote in that shit. It was crazy. So, I feel like this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the Summer McKee drama because I literally just re remembered this. I feel like we all remember the dote scandal. Literally shut down the website. Um, which I might make another video on that. Um, but... there's not really like a set reason why YouTube is kind of like dying out. I feel like a lot of it is this kind of like sit down video essay content um, with like a couple vlogs here and there and like artsy content, but there's no really it girls of YouTube anymore. That's just something I've been thinking about a lot recently. But let me know what you guys think. If there's any it girls that you guys know of, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all next week. Bye.